Hey, what's going on Machine Masters? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining us on this channel today. Today's video, I will be using Studio One version four, and I wanna talk a little bit about its bin markers, which is very comparable to Ableton Live's warp markers, but in particular, solving the problem of working with three, four, time signature, or similar. Basically, anytime you're trying to sample something or use something and you find it in an odd time signature and it doesn't loop perfectly between two and four bars, um, even if you got the tempo correct and everything, you'll notice this weird syncopation and kind of throws your whole vibe off. So warp markers and bin markers in Studio One help kind of solve that problem by giving you alternative options in terms of dealing with it. And I found it very interesting that when I'm not looking for three, four <laughs> time signature samples, I uh, always run into them, but when I'm looking for them, I can't find any. It was very strange. I start going through like old uh, stuff that Kanye and them used to do that I used to have like 12 bar loops and fruity loops. Now I can count the tempo correctly and they're all even. So I don't know, I was bugging back then. But now I know this song in particular, Kiss from a Rose, is definitely an odd time signature. And what I wanna do is grab a part that could fit between two bars or so in a trap rhythm. And I have a feeling that's gonna be the bridge of the song. So right before he says eyes, so I gotta catch it from here to there. So that's a perfect loop. The problem is because it's three fourths, you expect to hear the rest of it. Dun, 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 dun. It's like a waltz. It's a really groovy song. I'm gonna hit this little cursor here for macros. I'm gonna split at range. So that's my custom range. And like I said, I wanted this to be two bars. And what I'm gonna do is, A, you can find the tempo and find out that you're wrong by trying to change your tempo until it's two bars long, right? So between one and three. And then you hit P or Shift P and then keep adjusting the tempo until it's an even two bar loop. So around here or so, right? And then you put your metronome on and hear it and see if it works. Trash. So it's always off a, a little bit and that's expected behavior. And that's probably frustrating you, especially in Serato Sample, because Serato Sample does this all the time. And I'm like, yo, it wasn't three fours when I chopped it. But then when you record the chop, it was like, yo, I'm a whole bar early. So I'm putting it back to 140 because that's what I want it to be. And I'm gonna do this as a four bars in double time, but two and a half. So I'm hold the option key on Mac or Alt key. And then I get that little time cursor on the edge and I'm gonna drag it and do a regular time stretch to make it fit between those bars. Yeah. You know? So it's way up. So mute those drums real quick. I'm gonna zoom in on this range. And I'm gonna turn on the bend track, which is up here. And you can apply some bins automatically to it with this track or event selected, threshold 80% or less, depending on what you're trying to do. I'm gonna hit apply. I hit analyze, and now I got all these different bin markers here. Now to manipulate them in your toolbar and your cursor here, you gotta use this tool right here, the bin tool or shortcut, it looks like number seven. So what I wanna do is get the, did you know when it snows? So no and snow I want on the snare hit. Actually, let's shorten this loop. I'm gonna shorten it to even shorter than that. I'm gonna do half of that. So now we can get the bin tool and we take this no and we can pull it back. And we take this no and we can pull it forward. So to the two, three, and then to the uh, one, three. So what I wanna do actually is take this, take my bin tool, and I wanna remove some of these just by double clicking them. Only need one on each transient for the most part. And some of these are like triple transient. So I'll bring this one back first. Bring that back on the beat, and I'm moving every transient on the beat just to hear what it sounds like. So Snows definitely has to move forward. And I can move this back. So it looks like it's all on quarter notes. So it loops perfectly now with my dear. So it's my dear, did you know that when it snows? And then you can go from there, add your auto filters and everything, and just have a good time with it. I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit. I like this one faster for some reason. Let me catch it. Let me see if I can catch it. And that's really cool because the bend is time stretching that first chord and keeping it in relative, relatively in pitch. Really cool delay right there. 
it's almost like chopping up samples, but it's it just a whole breathes a whole new life into all those samples you're probably skipping or deleting or getting mad at, like I used to. Uh, or you're trying to make beats in three and six bar intervals, like you're uh, making songs for Drake or something. I don't know. I'm not with it. I like two, two, four, four, um, even barred loops, and um, it just makes my workflow a lot more easier to space things out. So hopefully you guys find this demonstration of working with a 3-4 sample very useful. Leave a comment in the box below if you have any comments or questions. And if you guys are on social media, definitely be sure to follow us. I'm at MG the Future on Instagram and Twitter. Be sure to follow at Machine Masters. Until next time, guys, peace.